New South Wales police have today been given powers to identify the women behind the veils. But Muslims are hitting back, accusing anyone who wants to ban the burqa of being racist. Laura Sparks has more. I'd like them banned in public places. Australians declaring war on the burqa. What I've organised is an event that I've called Ban the Burqa Day. From the suburbs to the cities, the grassroots movement to ban the burqa. I'm expecting as many as possible, as many who believe in this cause, to join me. So far, in one week, we've racked up 600 people attending the event. And that's growing at a rate of a r roughly 100 people per day. This 20-year-old has set up a Ban the Burqa Day Facebook page, calling on like-minded Australians to join him in protesting the burqa. He wants to remain anonymous. What I've asked people to do is on the 18th of July to don a balaclava and a thick jacket to imitate the burqa. His idea is simple. What if one day all Australians wore clothing that hid their identity like a burqa? If you're not allowed to walk into a bank or a servo with a motorcycle helmet on or a balaclava, um, why should there be two laws and two standards for other people? Ban the burqa rallies are being planned all over the country. The anger still smouldering after the uproar surrounding the Carnita Matthews case. Everyone back up! Back up! Now a new controversy has inflamed an already volatile situation. And for many, it's the final straw. An attack on our diggers in Afghanistan by Islamic fundamentalist group Hizbut Tahrir. Translation? Party of Liberation. The Muslims in the West have to question, do we and can we integrate? The accent is Australian, the sentiment anything but. A loaded invitation by Hizbut Tahrir to Australian Muslims to join their Islamic conference held in Sydney. We'd say this is an invasion, the people have a right to resist that invasion and uh, the foreign aggressors should go back home. While this organisation has been banned from most Islamic countries and Arab nations, as well as the Netherlands, Russia and Germany, they enjoy every freedom here. At their conference over the weekend, leader Uthman Bader has inflamed many Australians by describing Australian troops in Afghanistan as fair game and legitimate targets for Muslims. They're being used. They're being used in a way that is not acceptable. Mothers of fallen diggers are outraged. Private Tim Ackland was killed in Afghanistan in June. We're in Afghanistan, I believe, to help those people to have the right for freedom of speech. During the day-long conference, Muslims were urged to reject democracy and boycott elections. His but Tahrir also condone suicide bombings and call for the establishment of a caliphate, an Islamic state stretching from Spain to Australia. Australia now is more than ever in a state of crisis. We will lead Australia into a golden age, inshallah. They're the radical ravings of our homegrown Islamic extremists right here in Australia. A divisive anti-Australian message echoed by the hardline beliefs of others, like radical Australian Muslim Ibrahim Sadiq Conlon and his party, Sharia for Australia. I'm simply a messenger who's calling, what is Islam? I'm calling a spade a spade. Here he was in a small hall before a handful of followers. One man and his radical plan for this country. That Sharia is a far supreme system than democracy. Like his but Tahrir, Sharia for Australia calls for world domination under Sharia law, where women have few rights. Consumption of alcohol is banned, as is non-halal foods. And all laws are implemented by religious zealots. Australia would become a Muslim nation. It's inevitable. Whether you like it or not, it is inevitable. His message of hate is attracting more and more younger Muslims to his ranks here and around the world. And we are working in unity with Sharia for Belgium, Sharia for UK, Sharia for Pakistan, Sharia for other movements. Moderate Islamic organisations are offended. Author Dr Halim Rain is the author of Islam and Contemporary Civilization. I find it unfortunate that a group that enjoys all of these freedoms would then turn around and um, renounce the very system that gives those freedoms. So I have a right to be here and no one can tell me to go home. 